Hello friends, welcome to another episode of the Rifle Chair channel. And today I want to talk to you about make, taking advantage of opportunities. Now opportunities don't happen very often, I mean really. Uh, but here's the deal is that when they do occur, you need to be able to identify it and be able to put your finger on it, recognize it as an opportunity, and then be able to sometimes take a chance. Uh, not all opportunities work out well. But I, in my experience, uh, they've almost always offered certain things that I never expected. Let's say, for example, I recently did something a little bit different than I normally do, and that's uh, I accepted a request to test drive somebody else's rifle. And it, it involved um, uh, shipping and, and Canada Post problems and 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 different stuff like that. But I don't normally do those kinds of videos because I don't like to be kind of held accountable to anybody else. I like for my videos to be kind of spontaneous to a, cert to a certain extent, very, very much like what this video is. This is a totally spontaneous video. But to be able, um, I don't, I've always just kind of wanted to do my own thing and not be held accountable to anybody else when it comes to my own, these rifle chair videos that I do. And so for somebody else to request me to shoot their rifle, it kind of required for me to step outside of my comfort zone to do that. However, it was an honest review. It was the Bellissima video, uh, the Italian Beretta M1 Grand video. Um, that wasn't my rifle. A lot of people have made the assumption that that was my rifle. It wasn't my rifle. It was just a loan, a loaner. But So I made the video, stepped outside my comfort zone, and got it done in about a month and a half or so, or something to that effect. Shipped the rifle back, never thought anything else about it. That was it. That's the, the M1 Garand over and done with. And here's the weird part is that that's PB rifle 9557 that I use. I shot in that video, that Beretta M1 Garand. Um, I couldn't get that rifle out of my head. Like I, I enjoyed shooting it so much. And so uh, one day, an M1 Garand receiver arrived in the mail. It was a gift from Fluffy the Cat, who was another online entity. Really nice guy. Great guy. And he said, here, here's a receiver. Build your own rifle. And so if I had never, if I had never done that, that uh, Bellissima video, the opportunity to, to actually own, acquire, or to build my own M1 Garand would never have been possible. Okay, so <clears throat> I did something that forced me to step outside of my comfort zone and I made a video shooting somebody else's rifle. And now as a result of that, having done that video, I now own my own M1 Garand, which is a brand new build off a burrito receiver. This is rifle 274. And if I had never done that Bellissima, you know, video, this would not have been possible. This is a new build. It's essentially all new. It's a brand new Criterion Chrome Line 308 barrel, just like what, what I had identified as what I wanted to, do, to build in a previous video. It's got dupage black walnut stock and all newly phosphated um, components. Spring kit. You know, it's got a Winchester bolt fitted because the headspace of a chrome line barrel. You can't do a, give it a clamor pull through reamer or something to that effect um, because it's chrome line. So anyway, so fitting it, headspacing it, and all that different different stuff. I would never have had the opportunity to, to own this rifle if I hadn't shot that video. So essentially, even though it's not something I particularly wanted to do, of, at the beginning, because it kind of makes me step outside of my comfort zone a little bit. I'm sure glad that I did, because it opened doors that I didn't know were going to be opened. Okay? So that's kind of the... the, the uh, I'll give you another example, actually. Where is it? This here is a uh, Ruger M77 Mark II ultralight and 257 Roberts and I'll cover the serial number but now I personally think that the the Mark II Ruger action the M77 action of the Mark II variety 
it's just a better receiver than the Hawkeye iterations. Um, just the the smoothness of the bolt throw is just hands and feet better than a Hawkeye. So I've always been a fan of the of the Mark II. Um, I owned an M77 Mark II uh, stainless synthetic. This is blued synthetic, but it, the other one I had was stainless synthetic, full rifle, and 338 Winchester Magnum. And it beat the crap out of me. In fact, I, I, I developed a, f a shooting flinch because of that rifle, because of the recoil. Those are two, 225 grain um, spear grand slams that I was shooting out of that thing. And it just packed a wallop. And many years ago, I also shot a 257 Roberts. Now I kind of was kind of studying the the Mark II line, and I came across the Ruger Compact and the Ruger Ultralight, and I decided that I wanted one. I couldn't find one. I couldn't find one for years and years and years and years, and then suddenly an opportunity um, presented itself. And at a uh, fairly significant cost to myself, I acquired it. And um, I'm glad I did, though. But it, it wasn't easy, all right? But uh, so I acquired this rifle. And I, now I've, uh, I've gone through the, the, the other expenses of uh, acquiring the bullets that I intend to load for this rifle. They're 117 grain Hornady spire points. And I've got some, some brass, some IMR 4831 powder, and I'm gonna start reloading for this rifle. I was, not anymore though, because guess what? Another opportunity has, has presented itself. And it's, it's kind of tricky sometimes because, you know, I've gone through the expense of, this is a, just a dummy, there's no primer in, in, this, in this 257 Roberts here. Is that, oh, by the way, the action on the M77 here, the Mark II, is a long action. Even though it's just a little, two, you know, essentially a 7x57 cartridge neck down to a, to a 25 caliber. Um, so I'm going, I mean, I've gone through a fair, a fair amount of other expenses because of the acquisition of this rifle. I'm going to trade it. I'm going to trade it for a Ruger number 1 International in the same chambering. A rifle that I would have actually preferred over this. But you know, the, the, the stars have aligned and we're gonna, we're gonna do a trade. So I'm gonna get my Ruger number one and he's gonna get the, the Ruger Ultralight M77 Mark II, a beautiful rifle that I've been, I've been looking for, for for years. And, uh, but I've also been wanting a Ruger number one. So I mean, those are the kinds of trade-offs that you, that you make sometimes, I guess. I really want this rifle, but I've also always wanted a Ruger International RSI. And, and to also get it in 257 Roberts is just a, a, an opportunity I couldn't, I couldn't miss up. And so that's, what I, that's kind of the thing, what I'm talking about. Um, opportunities arrive, they disappear. And sometimes you just got to be able to commit yourself to doing it. And it, it's kind of a, a life philosophy is the way I look at it. It's not just about firearms collecting or anything like that, or just the experience. You're just trying to get the experience of that rifle and see what it's able to do, Do try different tests. It's interesting. So, I mean, it's, it's more than just, you know, collecting. I shoot them and I hunt with them and I, I use them and I carry them and uh, for many different uses and purposes, one of which is wilderness protection. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be using a Ruger number one for that purpose, but for hunting deer or other ungulates and so on, it's a perfectly suitable caliber and a, and a rifle design that I will use for that. And very attractive, kind of the Farkasen falling block design of the Ruger number one action. I just absolutely adore them. And this will be essentially my first rifle of that, of that design, and I'm going to well, it's going to be a cast member for at least one video. This what this was. This rifle was intended for it was to be a regular cast member on this channel, but now it's going to be replaced, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> Anyhow, so be, being able to commit to opportunities when they arrive is obviously important, and it's a life philosophy. 
sometimes you take chances that don't work out. But you know, so long as you do your homework and and kind of do some do some background and research and make sure you, you make educated decisions and you're able to do your your research quickly, because you know some of your decisions may be time dependent. Is that when an opportunity reveals itself, it's only the only person stopping you from advancing on it is you. Cheers, folks. Hope you're all doing well. Maple Leaf up.